know you all know her, but allow me to read her bio from our first flyer, because our second flyer had to be a little bit more concise. A product of 25 years of Catholic education, Claire Henning received her bachelor's degree in music from Immaculate Heart College in Los Angeles. Her master's degree in pastoral theology from Loyola Marymount University, Los Angeles and her Doctor of Ministry degree from the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. So she kind of tried. <laughs> Claire was commissioned in 2009 as a pastoral associate in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. Claire worked in parish ministry for 20 years at St. Paul the Apostle. We're so blessed to help her, to help her. In 2012, Claire left Paris Ministry to co-found the Paris Catalyst, a parachurch non-profit dedicated to encouraging parish leadership teams to think creatively, act courageously, and renew the church. In 2019, Paris Catalyst was acquired by Renew International. Since then, Claire has been writing a blog at CatholicConversations.com and giving retreats. Let's all welcome Claire Henning. Thank you, Charlotte. And thank you for having me back. I appreciate it. Also, thank you for moving up here to the Upper Social Hall uh, because today's um, program is going to be um, you're going to want to have a table or chairs to, to kind of sit because I'm going to ask you to do some writing and maybe some conversation. So uh, that's why we're here today. So thank you for that, that change. Um, last time I was with you, we talked about belief. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, looking at prayer. Um, so it makes sense that we start this day with a prayer. Uh, the prayer I chose to begin our meeting today, I found in one of Richard Rohr's daily meditations uh, from his Center for Action and Contemplation. I don't know how many of you follow that, but it's a wonderful daily uh, exercise that you can have online. This prayer is called a Prayer for Our Community which I thought was fitting for our community here today. And those of you who are in women's face sharing will recognize it because we prayed it on Tuesday morning. Uh, so I invite you to please quiet yourself. Feel yourself in the presence of the divine presence. God, Lord of all creation, lover of life and of everything, please help us to love in a very small way, the way you love, infinitely and everywhere. We thank you that we can offer just this one prayer, and that will be enough, because in reality, everything and everyone is connected, and nothing stands alone. To pray for one part is really to pray for the whole. And so we do help us each day to stand for love, for healing, for the good, for the diverse unity of the body of Christ and all creation. Because we know this is what you desire, as Jesus prayed that all may be one. We offer our prayer together with all the holy names of God. We offer our prayer together with Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now last time I was with you, I provided a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, this time I brought something different. I brought some writing journals. You should all have a journal at your table. And there's also some pens in the center of the table, if you have that. Um, I'm going to invite you to use those today. 
to take notes if anything strikes you. Kind of make yourself at home with your journal. And we will be using that journal later for a prayer experience. So if, you, if I say something just so brilliant that you can't forget, <laughs> please write it down so you can. <laughs> you know, prayer is a very broad topic. So to begin, we kind of need to ask ourselves, what is prayer? And I'd like to ask, ask if any of you would have a definition of what you consider prayer to be. Would anyone want to speak up as to what you think prayer is? I find that prayer is a direct connection to God himself. A direct connection to God himself. Yes? Uh, I see prayer as a conversation with God. Conversation with God. Did everyone hear that? I, I will repeat it. If in a sign of distress, she finds it particularly nourishing to have there that kind of prayer. Yes, I'll, I'll repeat it. Thank you. Anyone else? I think for me, in a way, it's, it's uh, becoming aware. You know, when I am quiet and, and you know, wanting to play, just be quiet. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, So it's an awareness that comes for you in silence mostly, and that awareness that God, the presence of God around and in you. Well, yes? I think prayer can be really, when my father was sick and they told me he was brain dead, I handed him a rosary and he started going with the beads. And I said, hey, you say he's brain dead, but look what his little hands are doing. And he said, well, something about rote. Yes, that, that's, that's okay. fascinating, so it's, so it's a little yeah. bit more, um, like, ingrained, it's a little bit more, mm -hmm. I don't know what you're I know, that we, that, uh, there's, that we have our tradition, particularly, has a lot of prayers that we actually learn and, and memorize and repeat and repeat, and that roteness is, is, uh, has a real value. Anyone else? Let me see if I can repeat that. Um, she says that it's a kind of solidarity that during the times when she's had some difficulties and had a lot of people praying for her, she's felt that connection and that solidarity with the people around her who, in, through their prayer. Yes? I remember the Baltimore Oh, wait, just one second. Uh, uh, you go, uh, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead, yes. I remember the Baltimore Catechism definition. Prayer consists of adoration, thanksgiving, supplication, and expiation. Wow. wow. I bet you had to have gotten a gold star in the front of your catechism for that. <laughs> so, the Baltimore Catechism, and I don't remember that one. If prayer is adoration, adoration thanksgiving, and thanksgiving, supplication, supplication Expiation. Expiation. Thank you. And yes, you have that. Well, I was saying that it's a way of trusting him, trusting God. So when I pray, I trust. It's a form of trust. Yeah. Trusting that God is there, trusting that God is communicating with you. Yeah. Great. One more. Yes, I think prayer can be an act. When I go to light a candle, that's an act, but I think it's a prayer, and it's going to be lit all week. Yeah, and, and she's talking about action. That, and then we see that in our rituals. When we raise our hands, when we have actions, that's, that's also a type of prayer. Thank you. Very good. Well, here are a few definitions that uh, came from uh, Father James Martin's book, Learning to Pray. 
Uh, one of them is, is comes from St. John uh, Damascene, which I don't know if I've even said that name right. <laughs> he, he referred to prayer as raising one's mind and heart to God. St. Teresa of Lisieux said prayer is a surge of the heart. It is a simple look turned toward heaven. Teresa of Avila said prayer is a close sharing between friends. Walter Burghardt, who's a theologian and a preacher and an advocate of social justice, said prayer is a long, loving look at the real. Prayer can be a long, loving look at the real. I agree with him. But I can also have a very quick look at the real, too. I don't think prayer has to be long. It can be very short, too. In fact, just having the desire to pray is a prayer in itself. Father Martin offers one definition of prayer that is helpful to him, and he says that prayer is personal relationship with God, which was many of you have kind of expressed. He also says that prayer is a conscience conversation with God. And although I do believe that prayer is oftentimes a very conscious conversation, I also believe that prayer can be unconscious, uh, or not, not even being aware that this is what you're doing. When one of my uh, sons was in seventh grade, he became very ill, and we just couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. They gave him a lot of tests, they uh, extracted fluid from his lung, they kept thinking it was this or that, they hospitalized him to try to find out what was wrong with him. And uh, he was in for about three days, and I was there with him the whole time. And um, I found that I couldn't pray. I couldn't use words. Words just meant nothing to me at that time. But I found myself smoothing down the sheets of his bed, fluffing up his pillow, holding his hand while we watched television, keeping him in conversation, and then I realized after the fact that had all been prayer. That was my way of, and I realized how prayer didn't need words. That was the first time I experienced that in my own life. That there didn't even need to be words to be prayer. So, um, another way to look at prayer is that Jesus himself taught us a great deal about prayer. He taught us to pray how to pray on our own, and he taught us how to pray in community. In the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Synoptic Gospels, we read that Jesus would often go out by himself to pray. The, boss, the Gospels even give us different reasons why Jesus left the disciples and the ministry behind him and spent time alone with God. He sometimes went off to pray before a major task. Luke tells us that after Jesus was baptized, he spent 40 days praying in the desert before launching his ministry. Matthew tells us that Jesus went out to work out his grief. After Jesus learned that his cousin John the Baptist had been beheaded, he went off by himself. In Luke, we find Jesus going off alone to make important decisions. Luke tells us that early in his ministry, Jesus spent a whole night alone in prayer, and the next day chose his 12 disciples. Jesus also went off in times of distress. Hours before he was arrested, in a great emotional turmoil, fearing what was about, he, he was about to face, needing the support of his closest friends, he went to the Mount of Olives, a short distance away from his friends, and went to pray with his father alone. Jesus also taught us how to pray in community. The most obvious example is the Last Supper, where he told us to do this together in memory of him. We also have the example of Pentecost, 
where together in prayer, they all receive the Spirit. In Matthew, we hear that where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. Given all these examples, in the end, I think prayer is simply any method we have that deepens our relationship or our connection to God. Prayer can come from our physical selves, from our hearts, our minds, our logic, our breath, our bodies, our imaginations. Prayer can come out of our ecstatic times and from our deepest wounds. Prayer can come out of our light-hearted feelings and emotions, like love or gratitude, kindness to others, self-sacrifice done in love. It can equally come out of our dark times, where we feel fear, loneliness, anger, depression. Prayer is like a doorway into God's presence, within us, around us, and importantly, God's presence through us to others. That doorway is not limited to ourselves. It opens to the presence of God outside of us, in nature, in art, in music, in spiritual writing, in other people, in the mass, in service to others. Prayer can be words, prayer can be silence. Prayer can come from activity, it can come from stillness. Over the centuries, we have developed methods of prayer that help us break into that awareness of presence. We have meditation, contemplation, Lectio Divina. We have confessional prayers, intercessory prayers, prayers of petition, prayers of intercession, prayers of praise, prayers of lamentation. We have the rosary. We have the mass. We have silent retreats and great celebrations of praise and music. There are two things prayer is not. Prayer is not perfection. God does not grade on the curve. There's no right way to pray. And prayer is not a goal. It isn't the end result. Prayer is our various attempts at being present to God's presence. Prayer is the knock on the door, the icebreaker, the key to the car, the GPS of our spiritual lives. We Catholics love our rituals. We love the smells and bells and the mystery. For us who pray all those lovely written prayers the church provides for us, it can be easy for us to slip into letting the mechanics of praying, the motions, the memorized words become the only thing that we're thinking about in prayer. At times, the mechanics of our prayer life can get in our way. In the book, 40 Days of Practice, two authors, one of the authors tells a story of praying when he was a youngster. He recalls kneeling by his mother's bed, trying to balance a small statue of Jesus on the lumpy bedspread. When he thought he had it set firmly upright, he folded his hands, closed his eyes, and started to pray. But each time he started to pray, he heard a light thump opened his eyes to see that the statue of Jesus had toppled over on the bedspread. It happened again and again. He'd stand the statue back up, begin to pray, and then hear it topple over again. As best as he can remember, he never got around to the actual business of praying because he couldn't get the statue to stand up correctly. As I said before, we, we 
can get um, so involved with the mechanics of praying that we begin to think that that's all there is to it. We forget that our rituals and written prayers are just tools. Tools designed to help us deepen our relationship with God. Let's take the sign of the cross. Have you ever considered the sign of the cross to be a prayer itself? I believe in the name of the Father. I believe in the name of the Son. I believe in the name of the Holy Spirit. Is there a more pure prayer than that? But sometimes we treat it more like an hors d'oeuvre before the main course. It's, you know, it's still a ritual, it's still a prayer, but its presence really isn't there. Sometimes it is the door that opens us up to the presence of the present. And sometimes it's just uh, a flash on the face, you know? I'm a religious person who prays, but I pray not because I am a religious person but because I am a human being. Some part of my nature points me outward, beyond myself, beyond my own nature, beyond who I know, what I know of nature altogether, to this divine other. Zinsat is a German word that I've just been trying to wrap around. Zinsat, uh, it has a meaning that means something like our life longing. It has to do with our intense desire that is for something beyond our human ca capacity to fulfill. Our life longing. And do you ever think that the desire to know more, to understand more, to be more, to be long is to be longing for God? I have a primal curiosity and drive to search and connect with that other, with what I understand to be divinity. Because I am religious, my prayer takes a certain shape. My tradition provides me with a language, a community, and a space I have to say the best parts of Catholicism have helped me walk through the mystery that is God. But I don't believe that I need, that my need or my instinct to connect to God comes from my Catholic tradition. I believe it comes from God's self. I embrace the language and imagery and traditions as a great gift, a great tool. Words and images and incense and music are marvelous tools that help us develop and grow this endless, ongoing conversation. This morning, I'm going to invite you to try a prayer form which may or not be, may make you a little uncomfortable, may be outside your comfort zone. I have a variety of prayer prompts on this table in the back. Now these prayer prompt, by these prayer prompts, I mean they are pictures, they are images, and each of which has a phrase that is an aspiration, a wish, a desire to be a better person. All of the statements on the prayer prompts begin with the words, May I. Let me give you an example of a few of them. One of them is, May I never consider my weaknesses and faults the larger and more authentic part of me. Another one is, May I cease to be annoyed that others are not as I wish they were, since I am not as I wish I was. Another, may the urgency with which I approach my work never become anxiety. The world is not mine to save. All of these affirmations or wishes start with may I for a reason. Quite often when we begin to pray, we start as if 
you know, we need to get God's attention. Hello, God, it's me, I'm over here. When in actual actuality, God is always there, and it is our attention that needs to be engaged. When we start with may I, it puts us right into the conversation and into the presence of God. By praying may I, we join the mother of Jesus who prayed, may it happen to me according to your word. One thing you will notice is that none of the prayer prompts are may I have something. These may I's are more about personal growth and aspirations. They are more about presenting yourself to God as someone ready to grow, ready to change, and asking God to help you develop in a specific area. I said, as I said, there are a variety of prompts back there uh, on the table. And they are just a tool. They are here to help you jumpstart a conversation between you and God. So in a few moments, I'm going to invite you all to walk over to the table, take your time, and look at all of them closely, and choose the one that speaks most to you today. You don't have to know why it speaks to you. If you feel drawn to a phrase or to the picture, I encourage you to just go with it. But I'm going to ask you to please do this in silence. We are, you're going to we realize that your prayer experience and our prayer experience as a community of faith begins now. Your selection is part of your prayer. So I'm going to ask you to do this in silence and take your time. After you have chosen one of the prompts, prayer prompts, please take your seat again and continue your silence. Read over, mull over what you've selected. Get familiar with it, get comfortable with it. Change a few words to make it more your own if you need to. Think about what you chose or perhaps why you chose it. And then take your journal and write your prayer prompt in it. Once it is written there, I want you to consider it the first sentence in a letter to God. And I'm going to give you time to sit there in silence and write that letter to God. Does anyone have any questions about what we're going to do? Does it make sense? Yes? We're just going to do it by tables. Oh, one, do one table at a time. That's fine, yeah. So we do one table and then... Yeah, and I just ask you all to just remain in silence while we do this and uh, think about what we've been praying about, that this has all been prayer, but this is going to be the next phase of it. 